Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Water City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you get news of when these great interviews come about. With me this morning, I have all the way from Greece, Miss Andri Lagio. Did I pronounce that correct? Yeah, everybody gets confused. It's Lagio, but I'm going to delete it forever, I guess, because <laughs> no one can pronounce it good. <laughs> Oh, I like the stone behind. <laughs> what happened? What's that? Oh, sorry. Oh my goodness! Wow, what? Wow. Yeah, it's a tomcat, right? So yeah, I fell in love. I like that. Perfect. Um, so uh, yeah, it's pretty distracting. So, anyways, I'm gonna go with uh, Bob the painter. Pretty oh, sure. Oh, Ross. That's Ross the painter, right? Bob Ross the painter. Yeah, yeah. You know your, <laughs> you know your North American culture better than I do. Maybe, I don't know. I used to watch on television when I was a young girl, like his paintings and how he does all the crazy things trying to do it myself. Yeah, and then we put a little kind of happy tree. So you're saying when you were younger, like, I mean, what are you, what, 25 now? Yeah, I'm 25. Oh, okay. That's, oh. Well, that's what I figured. <laughs> uh, the reason I got uh, Anjali on the show um, is because I noticed on her social media, and it's all about algorithms, right? Things come yeah. across my feeds that I'm interested in, and obviously it's hard rock music. And I noticed uh, the Metal Queen notion beside her name, and I thought, hey, wait, what are you talking about? Lee Aaron is the Metal Queen. When did you get coined that phrase in Europe, Andre? Um, I don't know. They started calling me the Metal Queen because I think that... I have the ability to sing male difficult songs that most females can't. I think that's the reason they started calling me that way. Okay. And did you see the uh, video I sent you? Were you aware of Lee Aaron, our metal queen here in Canada? Yep. Yes. I actually bumped into her at the Monsters of Rock Room. She was having an interview with Mark Wise, the legendary photographer, which he has also shot me in, in Monsters of the Mountain last year. So, yes, I, I saw her live. It was great. Wow, that is incredible. So one of the questions uh, I had in my notebook was, why is it that a lot of young women, especially, not only um, are into hard rock, but they're into the bands that I grew up listening to. For instance, um, Queensryche, Dio, Black Sabbath. To me, it's unimaginable. When I was growing up, I I wasn't into anything until I got into Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. So I know people that about my age would say, oh, they love the blues, they love jazz, and I'm like, that just foreign to me. So what makes you interested in that kind of music? I think that blues is the base of all this genre because I, I started singing the blues. I grew up in the 90s uh, and uh, the genre that was on top was pop. So we had to listen to pop, but our parents used to listen to hard rock. So my father, we were on the car driving and he would put ZZ Top and Free and uh, that kind of band, Scorpions. And then I listened to Deep Purple, Child in Time. And then I figured that, oh my God, I can reach that high and even higher. And and then I found out that there was something going on with my voice. But uh, yeah, I love Queen Strike. I've covered three of their songs. I met uh, Todd LaTorre also, Michael Wilton. He recognized me, it was just great because I have been longing for this moment to meet those guys and, and talk to them. So that's a really really blessing absolutely um so before we talk about uh, what you've got coming out just give the viewers that are unaware um just a bit of uh, your background and um how you came to, came to be who you are right now uh i had to step in and i had to prove myself all the time to be honest i was 16 years old and my teacher here in greece he was pretty famous as a guitar player he had a band one of the greatest classic rock bands uh and uh oh here's tom again <laughs> What's that? and um he and i said you know what i want to sing and i want to sing in your band and he was just like what does little girl want from my life and it was kind of crazy but then i went into the studio and i grabbed the microphone i've never had interaction with a microphone before in my life and i sang piece of my heart johnny's job when he was like 
you got the job. And they actually kind of, you know, not fired, but left the, the other singer that they had. So they hired me and I was 16 years old. Those guys were about 45 at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just played professionally. So that's how I've learned to do things. I didn't form a band, school band and stuff. I went into the professional stuff right away. And that's how I learned to work now. Uh, I learned to work only professionally when it comes to music because I take it seriously. Right. Um, so leading on, another thing I noticed, and then we'll talk about the album when it's released in the single right now. Um Marco Mendoza and Wendy Dio. How do those two names fit into your uh, your history? Uh, actually, my manager, uh, Johan, that manages also other artists uh, in the metal. Is it and Adrian's pop same manager? Yes. Yes. <laughs> small world. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Right. Uh, yeah, small world. <laughs> so he said. I said to him, after the cruise, I want to play to this festival because Dio, he is my godfather and he has been leading my way all those years, lighting up my days. So he said, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll just send an email with your stuff. So he sent an email with my stuff and uh, I get noticed by all the crew. And, uh, and Wendy Dio and she said, I want this woman uh, into my show. So... After the rock cruise, we went directly to LA and uh, and we played all together and it was amazing. I met Wendy, she hugged me. We talked about our favorite, uh, you know, brands like uh, Chanel and YSL and stuff. <laughs> like, you know, like female stuff. Yeah. I was, because I felt so close with that woman. Like she was uh, my mother slash grandmother. And we, there was so much love when I hugged that woman. It means that, she really did that from from heart, and that's what uh, I really acknowledge and I appreciate into those people nowadays. I try to work with people that they appreciate who I am and not only what they see or what they take advantage of or exploit. Right, right. So now let's go with you have an album coming up called Sky, um, and Mistress of the Night is the current single. Um, just talk a bit about that album and, uh, and who worked with you on it. Yeah, my next album is called Skies. It's 100% metal with some blues and pop also elements. Like, it's the combination of how I write songs. Uh, I have, like, pop ballads and uh, the blues voice on the metal riffs that I play also. Uh, it's my first big attempt to, to do heavy metal, like real heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got inspired by Halloween, Queen Strife, and uh, Megadeth. I love Megadeth. They are my favorite. And I put all those elements into an album. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy and glad because I think it's, it's one of the greatest things that I've ever created. And uh, the musicians are uh, 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 Russell Gil Gilbert, that he plays with your right hip on drums. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike LaPond uh, played bass from Symphony X. Yep. Billy Sheen guest also uh, on bass. And oh my God, there's so many names. Stefan, Stefan Flatt is a very talented guitar player from UK. Uh, he recorded the whole album. Uh, on keys, I have uh, Corbin Bath. He plays with uh, Oli John Roth and orchestrates also. Okay. And uh, it's mixed by uh, Jay Rustin, that he's my favorite. Hi, Jay. If you're, I know you're going to watch this interview. I know you know, you know, I love you. Yeah, and he's my favorite human being. He's like so talented on the mix. He mixes Corey Taylor, Anthrax, and many, many other bands. Wow. And yeah, he's he's the master. Like, uh, I think that this this guy can take my whole production into another level. He's amazing. And I've decided to work with him uh, eternally. <laughs> awesome. Um, so where can people, okay, the album's going to be released, you you figure, by September? Yes, I figure by September the album will be out. And uh, I have three video clips. One is from the Mistress of the Night that's already uploaded on YouTube. And I have other two, which is from the Skies. And another song that's a ballad is called My Love which I filmed in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Well, were you that in was... Canada? Oh, it snowed like, uh, yeah, sometimes it snows here, sometimes, not always, just for three days and we take advantage, we go out there filming and stuff, right. then we, yeah, we get back uh, completely frozen, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so where can, well, before we uh, let you go, because I know you're a very busy woman, um, where can people go to get to get the um, album and, um, well, I'll put the video clips underneath the description box here. Um, but um, it can be uploaded from your website? Or... Uh, actually, for now, I have uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and, uh, okay, nobody cares about Patreon anymore, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I've never got it even on it, so I've just heard of it. But No, it's just it's Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube that I have for now. I'm, I'm building my website uh, okay. slowly because I'm trying also to promote the uh, – some exclusive merch for mm -hmm. uh for women i know it sounds weird because metal is 95 percent made out of men but i think that more women should come to the show so i created uh bags jewelry uh clothing only just only for women to come to the shows to enjoy and to buy some great chic uh and and uh quality stuff Awesome. Well, I think more women are getting into metal, though. I mean, also, yeah, for, for the fans, of course, and uh, there are a lot of female fronted bands somehow. I don't know what's happening. It's just <laughs> in every corner, there's someone that's uh, that's singing, it seems. Yeah, yeah I've noticed <laughs> that in the last, uh, well, say five to ten years anyways. Um, what is the opposite of unsubscribe? What is the opposite of unsubscribe? Just an easy question. <laughs> subscribe. Everybody subscribe to the channel as this great talent from whereabouts in Greece are you? Athens. From Athens, Greece. Andrea Lagio, Lagio. I am so sorry if I pronounce that wrong. Says. It's um, fine. <laughs> what is, do you have a favorite Canadian band or musician? Uh, all I know is that Alexa is Canadian, right? Oh, Elisa from uh, Glue's White, White Glue's? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She plays with my dearest friend, Jeff Loomis. Oh, and our, our Emmy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, she is great. That is awesome. I, I like her style. I like the fact that she's also uh, multilingual. He, he, she speaks French and English, and I kind of relate because I also speak French oh, and wow. uh, Spanish. So wow. I love it. Um, yeah, she did a really good, um, I didn't even know this until I interviewed him, but I interviewed Dee Snyder a couple of times, and one time I found out he did a ballad with Alyssa. Did you, have you heard that one? Uh, which one? What is it called? I forget. <laughs> Jeez. I, I always forget. I told you it'd be cause... funny. Huh? I told you it'd be funny. I forgot uh, the name of the song. Anyways, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the description box if I remember, yeah. but anyways, yeah, she's got a lot of range as well. Oh, mostly she growls, I guess. I mean, I haven't heard her singing like, uh, I think she can sing more like her, her singing is more pop when she sings clean vocals, mm -hmm. like uh, more of sweet, smooth, I would say type of Ariana Grande thing. Like she, her voice when she's not growling, it's very sweet. So. Right, right. You know what I'm going to do here? I am going to. And I don't. Everybody knows what I'm doing here. I'm just going to Google it. Just because I'm that kind of guy. Because um, I, I want you to check it out. It's a great song. But we're promoting you, I know. Ah, uh, jeez. I can't even find it. I can't even find it. Anyways. I, I, I think, though, that uh, in the metal industry, there are a lot of females, okay, that they, they're trying to sing metal. Some of them are softer, some of them are somewhere in the middle, and some of them are, like, top-notch. I think that there are some women that they have balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I admire them very, very, very much. Like, uh, Nura from Battle Beast, her voice is impeccable. It's like her voice is made for metal. It's yeah. like she's do that thing. Right. She, she holds in the voice. It's like, and you can and you can hear if you have listened to her. Uh, you you would know. Like, go and check uh, Battle Beast. I think she's one of my time favorites. 
Okay, so actually that might answer my question. I was going to ask you who who are your influences musically. <laughs> Actually, uh, no, Nura, I admire her very much. I can't say that I'm uh, influenced because I have my own character and personality. But I think that uh, those that formed this personality is uh, Ronnie James Dio, 100%. I think that every time I sing, there's there's some part of him in me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, you might laugh, but Christina Aguilera. No, I won't laugh because, and you might laugh because I actually liked, I wasn't a fan of Ricky Martin. I'll tell you right now, but nothing against you, Ricky, if you're watching, which I'm sure you're not. But anyways, I was going to Mexico years ago and it was 30, 20 years ago. And his album, for some reason, had a lot of Spanish touches in it. So for some reason, I started listening to La Vida Loca. But on that album, he did a duet with Christina. Yes. Which was amazing. No. Nobody wants to be lonely. Yes, look at you, Christina. Hey, yeah, I could say that I can emulate her very good. Holy shit, that was awesome. Usually, when I get somebody to play an instrument or you know sing a couple bars uh, in an interview, it's pretty bad. But because of the vocals, wow, you got a good setup there. That was great. Yeah, I can say I think that I have. Um... Uh, I have studied her a lot. I can emulate the way of her singing because it's some kind of technique that she uses. And uh, I don't know. I'm I'm totally in awe by by all of it, all of it, all of her technique and the feeling that she puts on the songs and uh, that she's not afraid. She always sings live. I don't know. She's my idol. Is it and the way that the fingers are pointed? Because I asked Gabby Gunsakova and she's. And she sang something, and it was like, it's about this. You got to do this to make the sound right. Uh, sometimes uh, what, how the brain works is like uh, you have a full wave, full wave line in your head that goes up and down and do this. And sometimes when you do that with your finger, it's more of like you are telling yourself where to go. Oh. Like, like when I did like, hey. Like I'm hitting that on the head and I'm there. So I know the note that I'm aiming for. I usually get uh, the finger telling me where to go. It's like out. <laughs> hey, like, yes, yes. I got my one zinger in there. Um, so I'd like to thank you very much. And I'm pretty sure in the future, you're going to be one of those women that people look up to and say, who influenced you? And they're going to say, Oh my God! There's this great singer from Greece, Andre. Do you you must know her? Oh my God! I like I, I hope so. I mean, I'm trying to give everything that I can for more people to to have knowledge, to to study, to explore, to to find who they are because it's the most important to find who you are and what you serve in this industry and why you are here. It's very important. You're here to give 100 percent to the people that. That, that watch you and love you and listen to you and you give like, you're giving them happiness that goes through, you, through their ears and goes directly to their brains, meaning that you are making a big, big um, achievement to people. Like our, our job, our entertainer's job is to make people feel happy. That is awesome. With that, everybody, this has uh, been a great interview. Um, it's in it's interesting. It's coming on the um, the tail of my interview yesterday or a few days ago with Andrew Free Freeman, um, and that's with the last in line. Uh, Ronnie James Dio's former guitar player, Vivian Campbell, singer. So check that out as well. Uh, once again, Andre, I'd like to thank you this morning for the same. Well, it's morning here, and it's uh, what time is it in Greece? There about noon. Uh, it's three, three o'clock. Okay, so I, I apologize for making Andre get up so early. No, 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 it's 3 p.m., so don't worry. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thanks so much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here in North America. I'd love to. I, I'd really love to travel there. I've never been. That would be an, a really honor, great honor to be there.